It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that the Loons were almost a team of destiny based on whatever cliche you want to use. They got hot at the right time, for instance. Uh, they were a Cinderella story. They had the worst record in the playoff field in the Midwest League and, and went on to win as a wild card. But if you look at game by game, really the pivotal moments down the course of the regular season in particular, leading to just clinching the playoff berth, you realize that the Loons had nothing given to them and had to really work to achieve everything they, that they got in terms of a playoff berth at the end of the regular season. Our, our thinking was we were playing so well down the stretch um, and, and had a toughness about us down the stretch um, that I thought if, if this team gets in, that they would be, you know, kind of a team to beat, uh, a little bit of a dangerous team. Um, so, you know, you never know if that's going to end up in your team winning the last game of the season. But I thought if they got in, they no one would want to play us right now because we, we were the hottest team in the league. I wasn't positive that we were going to win that specific game on that Sunday, but I did feel like we were certainly getting in. Uh, there was just, uh, I don't know, there was a different vibe with the team and in the ballpark. I think the fans could sense that. I felt like um, by mid to late August, there was just a different feeling in the ballpark. Uh, on some of those nights when you know we were playing well and winning, uh, you could just sense it. So for me, just kind of watching everything unfold, I didn't, you know, I didn't feel like, oh, here we go, we're not going to make it. Uh, I really felt like we were going to get in. West Michigan had a bit of an aura around them. They were the defending champions from 2015. Again, they had had the Loons number over the past couple of seasons. And in many ways, that game on Sunday was a microcosm of the Loons season. Their offense was non-existent for a good stretch in that game. Again, a testament to the good pitching on both sides. And the Loons pitching kept West Michigan off the scoreboard to just give the Loons a chance to win that game going into the bottom of the ninth. And to the point of timely hitting, something that the Loons found in their hot stretch in August. It was a leadoff single, a sack bunt to move the runner into scoring position, and then with two outs, Jay Kenson delivered the timeliest hit of all. Jay Kenson, what a time to bat. All for three with a runner on second base and two outs in the ninth inning, and a chance to send the Loons to the postseason. And the count even at one ball and one strike. A hush falls over the crowd. And the 1-1. A bouncer up the middle. That's into center field, a base hit. Here comes Estevez rounding third. Azokar bobbles the ball. Estevez slides in safe. And the Loons are playoff bound. Uh, as soon as he hit that ball, I remember being in the tunnel down by first base. Uh, just this feel of he's going to make it. You know, they're going to score on this play no matter what. And uh, the center fielder, I think it was, bobbled the ball a little bit. And then it was just you knew it was good. And that celebration and that feeling of, okay, you know, we got in. We're the hottest team right now. Right then you sort of had this feeling, okay, we have a chance. It just felt different. Uh, you know, the 2009 team, I think, we were phenomenal. 2010, I think we had the best record in all of professional baseball in terms of our winning percentage. I think we won 90 games that year. And those teams were excellent. And I, I you know, at the time I felt like, wow, this is the year that we're going to do it. Um, but there was just something about our team this year, the way they would scrap and come back and come back. Uh, and it was a lot of fun to watch. Towards the middle of the season, you really had no hopes that they were going to make the playoffs. And then as the season continued to wind down, you thought, okay, maybe this could happen. And even on that day, the pessimist in me didn't see them making the playoffs this season. But with only two games remaining, they needed just one win or a Lansing loss on either of the days. And it's just great that they were able to get it done in front of the home crowd. And on that day specifically, uh, in case they were to clinch, which they end up do doing, I was down on the field right next to the Loons dugout when Jake Henson came up and, and knocked that ball up the middle and just feeling the excitement from not in the booth but within the group of fans that were standing around me was really fun for me uh, to, to experience that when I'm usually up in the booth and um, seeing the fans' excitement and seeing 
just the tension and feeling the tension in the stands was awesome from my perspective. Hey, just want to say you guys have been you guys have been great. Last month you guys have been fighting, never give up. The best part's about to come. Special special feeling to win like that to clinch the playoffs. Okay, that shows what type of team you guys are. Playoff beard going for Loon Skipper Gil Velasquez right now, but regardless, congratulations on leading this team to a playoff berth. The second year in a row the Loons have qualified for the Midwest League playoffs and the third time in the last four years. Skip, with this team in particular, the turnaround really impressive. The team four and a half games out of a wild card as late as August 11th, and they turned it around with an 18-8 and eight stretch over the final 26 games of the season. What, in your eyes, led to the turnaround? Uh, I feel it was that one uh, game we played here where we came back in the ninth inning down by six runs. Um, I think that sparked the guys up. And then going into uh, the series against Lansing where we swept them was, uh, was the big, biggest difference. Us going in there down four and a half and then sweeping them, putting us a half a game was, was uh, probably the biggest you know, series we had. Going into the playoffs, there was no question that the Loons were the hottest team in the playoff field. And that was the sentiment that was shared among the front office, down in the clubhouse, and among other teams in the Midwest League as well. You always pay attention to the standings. You know who the teams are that are trending in either direction. And so the consensus was the Loons only finished the second half two games above 500, but they're a team to look out for in the playoffs based on how they finished the regular season. Sort of in the other you know, years, you made the playoffs, but you knew we didn't have a team that could go far. This year, we knew we got the team to go far. All we got to do is get in, and we have a chance. That being said, the Loons get the gift of playing the Bowling Green Hot Rods in the first round of the playoffs, the team that set a franchise record for most wins in a regular season. They had won 47 games on the road, which is a very, very impressive total. And they finished with, tied for the best record in the Eastern Division. So you just wondered... Were the Loons hot enough to be able to knock off a team like Bowling Green that had had an excellent second half of the season as well and had won the division in the second half? Uh, well, well, they're a good team. You know, they don't, they don't, they put the ball in play. They have guys that are scrappy hitters. Uh, they got guys that can run. They got, they, you know, they, they do all the little things. They'll bunt. They'll hit and run. They'll, they'll steal second. They'll steal third. They'll find, they'll find ways just to put pressure on you. Um, but I think we're ready. I think our, our team's ready for, for them. Uh, we, we know what to expect. Um, these guys have been, we played them, I, I believe, four series already. So um, it's nothing that's going to surprise us. That's nothing that's going to, it's nothing that's going to catch us off guard. So I feel we're ready and these guys are, are hungry for, for a ball game. And I remember in the early going of that game, the Loons had Yadier Alvarez on the bump. He had been a spectacle to watch since he joined the team from the rookie Arizona League in July. He had the 99-mile-an-hour fastball. He had the breaking, breaking ball, the back-breaking, breaking ball, I guess you might say. But how would it translate in a playoff series against a very good Bowling Green team? And in the first few innings of that game, Bowling Green is just barreling up Alvarez. They, a good hitting team to begin with. They were sitting on his fastball. Although Alvarez's command seemed to be okay, Bowling Green was just hitting him pretty hard. That's what good teams do. But for every hard hit that Bowling Green seemed to put into play, the Loons' defense was just all over the field there to keep Bowling Green's offense in check. Logan Landon, who made sports center top 10 worthy plays in center field all year for the Loons, had a spectacular grab in left center field in the early going of that game to keep Bowling Green off the board. The 0-1, he rips the ball to center field. Back and to his right goes Logan Landon. He dives, falling on the track. Did he make the catch? Yes. What a play by Logan Landon, bouncing off the wall in left center field. And it saves a run to end the third inning. He got the sense as that game matriculated into the middle innings that the loons were weathering the storm and were just biding their time a little bit to hopefully sneak a few runs on Bowling Green and grab the lead. And sure enough, that's what happened. They took advantage of a couple Bowling Green errors on one play, in fact, grabbed a 3-0 lead. 0-1, oh, 
Curveball, line, over the head, and in the center field of the second baseman, Peter Maris. Janko, wave around, given to him at third base. The throw from center field gets past the third baseman, Padlo. Sprinting down the home plate, Zach McKinstry. He's in the score. Yadier Alvarez shuts out Bowling Green in the fourth inning, and then all of a sudden it starts pouring rain, and we have to pause play indefinitely, which was just a bizarre quirk to any baseball game. And then the fact that this was a playoff game layered on top of that made it even more unique and interesting to have a playoff game suspended. And there are not there is not much wiggle room built into a playoff schedule. Obviously, you can't make up this game down the road at a later date. You have to get these games in. Credit the Loons for staying in it and then scoring 15 runs uh, the next day. And you almost kind of felt like that was their series at that point. They had won it in the first game, even though they were going down to Bowling Green to face a tough opponent. And Gage Green joins us in the postgame show today after a historic team performance for the Loons. 15 runs the most in franchise history in the playoffs. They do it on the backing of 20 hits. And again, Gage Green, our guest, uh, fell a home run shy of the cycle, but that doesn't do you credit for how good of a day you really had. Single, double, triple, walk, and then another single. What made you so effective today? Um, you know, just getting ready for the game. I've been uh, working with Bates and Gill a lot these past couple days, and he's kind of been getting my mind right, mechanics right, and kind of helping me slow down the game. And, you know, it's, a, it's pretty easy to hit when everyone's getting hits on the team. So, you know, that momentum and energy just keeps keep flowing through the don't, or flowing through the dugout. And, you know, when the guys are getting hits and doubles and triples ahead of you, it just makes it that much easier. It was just amazing, and you just had this feeling, okay, this is the real deal. This team can go all the way. It's, it was just such an exciting and great feeling to think, wow, this is not going to be just another short run. This is it. But you never know how you're going to respond to those long trips, and uh, you know that, that series ended up going three games, and, and the, I, I'm going to get my games mixed up. But game three, I think we came from behind late. Uh, we were down, I think, in the seventh and eighth innings and came from behind to to win that game three on the road after a long bus trip. And that was really the moment that, all right, you know, we, we had our chance to say, okay, we made the playoffs. That was an accomplishment. Let's just fold up our tents and, and go home. And they didn't fold at all. They fought and won that first series. And, and then you really thought, okay, we're on our way now. It served in talking to players in the clubhouse over the course of the season. It served as a confidence boost, really, knowing that they had come back from late game situations before, again, going all the way back to the Lake County game on August 11th. This team felt whatever the score was late in games, and for that matter, whatever the situation, whether it was a regular season game or a playoff elimination game, that they had the chance to get back and, and make things happen or at least make the other team work for it late in games. And uh, Bowling Green was a tough out, but the Loons were equally as tough, and they got the job done.